Good morning, dear chairman, dear colleagues. First of all, I want to, I want to thank for invitation. Um, when I was assigned this subject, I first thought how I can summarize this comprehensive topic in time. Because I want to speak about echocardiography and its general role in simple TGA and not about the particular uh, echocardiographic parameters or, <coughs> or e examinations technique. There are many imaging modalities for preoperative and postoperative evaluation of TGA. Echocardiography is essential due to its feasibility and availability. Each imaging modality has own advantages and limitations. Feasibility, availability, safety, and accuracy are main features regarding this evaluation. And these factors should be seen as a criteria when selecting the optimal modality. Who defines good enough? Please imagine for a moment that Usain Bolt is not in this picture. In that case, the definition of perfect and good enough will change dramatically. What, what do we mean by good enough? When the accuracy rate of a method is about 85%, that method can be deemed to be good enough as a general opinion. Is echocardiographic examination perfect or good enough? How much accuracy is really needed to call a specific method good enough in medicine? First of all, I want to talk about preoperative echocardiographic examination um, and a role in TGA from echocardiography. Here I show you important points for preoperative echocardiographic evaluation. I don't want to talk uh, the details about details of diagnosis of TGA or diagnosis of associated lesion, but rather I would like to focus on two challenging areas in echocardiographic preoperative evaluation and significance of echocardiography, such as determining coronary anatomy and its role in estimating the intercardiac mixing. Since coronary anatomy is highly variable in individuals with TGA, actually about 50 anatomic patterns, a great preoperative definition of coronary anatomy is extremely valuable and challenging. The anatomic patterns can be classified as usual coronary anatomy and unusual coronary anatomy. And we see here usual coronary anatomy with 2D echocardiography. Please note here two, two separate, two, here two separate origins from left and right coronary artery. Now, Now I, I want to show simple anatomic characteristic of unusual coronary patterns for, for examiners. If 2D echocardiography shows single orifice or coronary artery looping around the great arteries or coronary course between the great arteries, a possibility of unusual coronary patterns must definitely be suspected. A detailed recognition should be performed before the surgery with other imaging modalities. First of all, you can see here single orifice from left coronary artery. And the second one is the coronary looping of LAD around the great artery, pulmonary artery. And at the last form here is a coronary course between the great arteries, this means intramural, echo, intramural coronary artery. Why, why is it important to determine the coronary anatomy? Because some coronary patterns with single coronary ostium and intramural coronary course increase the risk of coronary events in post-operative period. This specific study from Gremmels, Minnesota, shows uh, echocardiographic di diagnosis versus surgical diagnosis and accuracy of echocardiography in diagnosis. In method one, the 50% of all patients in method one uh, 
are examined with one readers, one examiner in Metro 2, two readers. Accuracy of 3D, uh, 2D echocardiography was found to be very high for usual coronary artery, about 95%. And for, for unusual coronary accuracy anatomy, accuracy rate was very low in method one and in method two was a little better. Furthermore, sensitivity of echocardiography can be, can be increased with experience. This shows method two here. The maximum accuracy rate that could be reached was only 75% in total. Excuse me. Yes. This takes time. It is to move. Now, the second issue I would like to mention is the role of echocardiography in balloon atrial septostomy. And neonates, if neonates as a clinical findings of hypoxia and small size communication and uh, balloon atrial septostomy should be performed. These two studies conducted in Brazil show how effective echocardiographic monitoring of balloon atrial septostomy is. The bedside two-dimensional echocardiography has been successfully used to guide the balloon atrial septostomy. This procedure uh, saves times and they're very effective, reduced risk, reduced hospital cost, and avoiding transporting of the patient to cat lab and to ang angiography. And effecti effectiveness of bedside echocardiography guided balloon atrial septostomy over 95%. In the rest of my presentation, I, 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 I would like to talk about post-operative complication from echocardiographic view after arterial switch or atrial switch. From the perspective of echocardiography, post-operative complication can be listed as follow. Obstruction of the neopulmonary output of tract, development of, of tract obstruction of the implanted coronary arteries and myocardial dysfunction, and uh, complication of the neoartic valve like aortic root dilatation and aortic regurgitation. In order to reach a diagnosis regarding these late complications, method like TTE or TE and various different echocardiographic parameters are being employed. In the follow-up examination of arterial switch and extensive echocardiographic monitoring can also be needed as well as the routine echocardiography. Additional techniques like tissue Doppler, stress echocardiography, 3D echocardiography are required especially for the better estimation of ventricular function and coronary complication. Now I would like to talk about right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, which is the most frequent and controlled late complication after arterial switch. This study from our clinic uh, shows about 15 to 20 percent, 20 percent moderate and severe pulmonary stenosis after arterial switch operation, um, the complication rate starts to rise in midterm here, uh, which can be explained with patients growing up. Usually obstruction is the level of the other pulmonary trunks and its branches, less commonly in the right ventricular outflow tract. Postoperative right ventricular outflow obstruction may occur at different levels. The growth of the child complicates postoperative assessment, however, because it becomes more difficult to find an adequate acoustic, acoustic window owing to typical retrosternal retro location of the pulmonary trunk and its branches after the Lecompte maneuver. In such cases, transvasophageal echocardiography may be helpful, as can be observed in this example, which belongs to patient 
belongs to the patient 10 years after arterial switch operation. It can be quite difficult to find the localization of stenosis by 2D echocardiography. Here we, we, saw, we saw increased flow, but localization, localization of stenosis is not possible. When acoustic windows for echocardiography is insufficient, other imaging modalities should be performed to localize the stenosis and to evaluate the hemodynamics. Here we see the MRI and 3D reconstruction of the same patient. Please note here the narrowing area at, at pulmonary bifurcation. Other complications of the art arterial switch operation are aortic root dilatation and aortic uh, regurgitation. This study from Boston shows, shows the aortic root set, set, set the core after operation and at five years and 10 years from 2.6 to 4.6. Freedom from aortic root dilatation at 10 years was 51% and freedom from moderate aortic regurgitation was 93% at 10 years. The aortic root dilatation determined when set score over dry severe dilatation over eight. Echocardiographic evaluation and assessment of new aorta is uh, accurate in the majority of cases, especially with the children. Set score should be taken into account when arriving at a decision about operation. Here we see a patient after 10 years after arterial switch operation with severe dilatation of aortic root and aortic insufficiency. And, and you see now the same patient four years after aortic valve replacement and root reconstruction, left ventricular dimension and function are normalized, but we have a now problem, a new problem, namely severe, super, severe pulmonary stenosis. The third issue I would like to present is about coronary problems after arterial switch operation. Coronary events are not rare and occurring most often early in three months and are an important cause of death. After arterial switch operation, commonly observed coronary artery problems are kinking, torsion, and stenosis. This retrospective study from Legendre, France, with about 1,200 patients, aims to assess the incidence and risk factor of coronary events after arterial switch operation and sensitivity of non-invasive tests in the diagnosis of coronary obstruction. Mean follow-up was about five years and 94 patients showed coronary events with sudden death, abnormal ECG and echocardiography. Unusual coronary pattern was risk factor for major operative events. 324 asymptomatic patients underwent angiography and approximately 7% of patients showed coronary lesion. Non-invasive test in this study was not sensitive enough for the diagnostic of coronary lesion. Echocardiography alone and other, te other techniques alone uh, has a very low sensitivity, about 35%. The combination, the combination of non-invasive test increased the sensitivity of diagnosis to until 75%. After coronary events, estimation of left ventricular function carries a fundamental importance. Here we see, and there are several parameters for comprehensive examination, like tissue Doppler parameters, um, 2D strain, DPDT, 3D assessment of left ventricle, 
echocardiography enables the better assessment of LV left ventricular dysfunction through extensive parameter. My computer is slow. For example, here, three-plane three plane EF and multi-slice imaging for regional and global function of left ventricle. The next dia shows real-time 3D, 3D echocardiography and full volume examination as for assessment of left ventricle EF and volume. Assessment of EF is relatively close in comparison with MR. Yeah. And the volumes are usually underestimated, but better than right ventricular volume estimation. Tissue Doppler imaging and speckle tracking make evaluation of regional myocardial function possible and can provide us the chance to perform a global evaluation. Here we see two chamber view and speckle tracking from a patient after arterial switch operation. Uh, please note the diminished, diminished strain and uh, EF. By bull's eye plot, which can be obtained through speckle tracking, are very useful for determination of regional problems due to coronary insufficiency. Picture OA shows normal findings, picture B shows um, LED occlusion in uh, corresponding areas, picture C shows LCX occlusion and plan D illustrates a glo global hy hypokinesis uh, by non-ischemic cardiomyopathy. Other comprehensive echocardiographic method is Stress echocardiography. Stress echocardiography is routinely used in risk stratification of flow-limited lesion in adults with atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. And stress echocardiography studies in adults is a high sensitivity and specificity. Who is the study from China? Show here the result of stress echocardiography in children after after arterial switch operation. 31 patients after arterial switch operation with normal angiographic finding underwent through dopamine stress echocardiography and 70, 75 patients so shows wall motion abnormalities went indexed from 1.4. 70 patients of 24 showed reversible myocardial perfusion defect with myocardial perfusion scan. Conclusion was, dopamine stress echocardiography may unmask wall motion abnormalities. From the perspective of echocardiography, there are three important late complications after art atrial switch operation, mustard and scenic. First of all, systemic right ventricular dysfunction due to chronic pressure overload. The second complication is tricuspid, regu tri tricuspid regurgitation, and the last one of buffer-related problems like stenosis and leakage. I want to talk about principally right ventricular dysfunction and buffer-related problems. Chronic pressure and volume overload result hypertrophy and dilatation on the right ventricle. All the factors and fibrosis cause diminished cardiac output of right ventricle. Here are the certain parameters for systolic and diastolic assessment of right ventricle, like PEPC, tissue doppler, DTDT, and the diastolic parameter. And here are the sum parameters, these parameters and non-values. PEPC, DTDT, myocardial performance index. It is Important issue for estimation of left ventricular function is three-dimensional echocardiography, which is used to estimate the right ventricular volumes 
has been gaining significance in practice recently. This paper from US depicts underestimation of right ventricular volume and EF in 13 studies worldwide, but 10 years trend showed improvement in the underestimation of EF, but underestimation of RV volume remains as a problem. Here we see speckle tracking of systemic right ventricle with global strain and EF. Strain is reduced and regional myocardial deformation can be uh, through speckle tracking assessment. I would like to underline the important points for the assessment of right ventricular function. Visual qualitative evaluation remains insufficient because its shape of right ventricle. There are several simple methods of assessment, FAC, myocardial performance index, DPDT, uh, tissue Doppler, TAPSI. At, last, at least one of these methods should be incorp incorporated into routine examination. Sophisticated techniques like t real time 3D echocardiography, tissue Doppler, and speckle tracking are recommended for research. Improvements of 3D imaging has clinical assessment of right ventricle term. Etiology of tricuspid regurgitation is well defined and can be classified in three main graphs, annular dilatation, prolapsus, and tethering. This there shows the mechanism of tricuspid regurgitation uh, in TGA with displacement of the popular muscle, especially in lateral wall, and secondary to dilatation of right ventricular annular, annulus. The third problem zone considered buffer related complication after arterial switch, like buffer stenosis or buffer leak. Buffer complication can be seen about five to 15 percent of all patients, especially mustard operation has increased complication. Um, buffer stenosis is relatively frequent in, in the area of superior vena cava. Pulmonary venous channel is rare. Um, Non-phasic flow, dilated pulmonary and systemic veins, Doppler velocity greater than 1.5, uh, echocardiographic parameter, echocardiographic assessment phase to detect systemic venous obstruction, especially in the, in the, in the arm of superior vena cava. Uh, for buffer leak, we need contrast echocardiography and transesophageal echocardiography. And now I would like to present you some echocardiographic loops with buffer-related complication. If my computer works. On the left side, trans, trans thoracic echocardiography with contrast. You see contrast passover and after closure with amplata occluder and note here small, small contrast passover. And the last one show here after closure of uh, buffer leak, but we see here as the rest buffer leak, buffer leak with bidirectional shunt, and here the patient with two two interventional closure buffer leak and VSD. And the last here. shows here intra intrachannel st stenosis without hemodynamic uh, effect. Here pulmonary venous stenosis, uh, here systemic venous stenosis. My conclusion, echocardiography is considered as an essential method in both preoperative and postoperative process due to its availability and feasibility. However, this method has been found not sensitive enough 
to detect several problems such as determination of coronary anatomy, post-operative coronary problems, localization of the right ventricular outflow tract obstruction and buffer obstruction, and estimation of right ventricular function and volume. Additional imaging modalities are needed in cases where echocardiography remains insufficient. New comprehensive echocardiographic tools like tissue Doppler, speckle tracking, real-time 3D echocardiography, and stress echocardiography are reason to hope for a better and more detailed evaluation, but it must also be noted that extensive experience is needed to improve this method. Thank you for it.